Hey guys, it's me, Tomato. I'm back from my two-week vacation thingy, if that's what you want to call it. It's been more a super wet walk in the park. Quite literally, actually. Uh, it rained all day. Every, well, it rained for two hours every day at a place called Philmont, which is what I'm looking up on Google Images right now because I was a stupid and, well, I wasn't a stupid. I didn't bring a camera. Just cameras are wave things and weight must be conserved. Because you have to carry that weight for miles. For days. For day. No one's gonna get the joke. It's, it's an inside joke. I spent two weeks in the backcountry with a bunch of my friends. We have a bunch of inside jokes. Like one guy is now a goat whisperer. Um, another one is now a semi-official priest. Um, he's only 14 now, so, so, I mean, you know. It's, it, it's crazy fun. Anyone who's been there will know what I'm talking about. And will know why one of my friends is named Harold and is now called Howard the Goat Whisperer. It's, it's a long time. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, Philmont. I figured I'd just bring up a few things, kind of go through my Philmont journey. Just to let you guys know what I've been doing for the past two weeks and let you know that I haven't been just faffing about. So uh, I guess we'll go first to Tent City. This is Base Camp. Uh, base Camp is civilization. It represents all the things that you will look forward to, like tents that you don't have to put up, food that is only mostly, like, not rehydrated. Some of it is rehydrated, but that doesn't matter because you didn't have to rehydrate it yourself. And that is all that really matters at the end of it. It's delicious, amazing, and they have ice cream Snickers and wonderful. And flushing toilets, which is also wonderful. In fact, this is probably the best picture of base camp I could find. This is a picture from the Trail of Tears. I walked down this trail. It is tearful. Um, so here at Tent City, they got a bunch of canvas tents. Very, very nice, luxurious cots. Uh, I'll see if I can find a picture of a cot. Come on. There we are. These are very luxurious cots. Uh, after you've been sleeping on the ground for two weeks. And the next thing they do is they stick you on a bus and you go hike around. First thing I did was I went to a Brayu. See if I can find a picture of it. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. So we went to a Brayu. There's a tavern or tavern, uh, not really a tavern, more of a. It's kind of a what's it, what they call it, cantina thing. It's a Brayu homestead. Uh, they do a lot of interp stuff out there. Really, really fun, uh, the Adobe stuff. And then it, we got there, we hung around, we decided to eat lunch for a little bit, and then it rained for three hours. This was our first day there. So uh, all that nice patchy grass that had been around, nice full grass, the nice solid ground, turned into what is basically a slip and slide made out of mud that we then hiked a mile up, which was fun, considering our packs weighed 30 to 40 pounds. Um, take one step, go two steps back. So I'll bring you, it's, it's fun. Uh, next we went to Crag's Camp, which is a trail camp, so I don't think there'll be any pictures, but we can try. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Crag's Camp. This is basically Crag's Camp. There's a river, there's some stuff around it. It's, it, it's a trail camp, it's a, basically a hole in the wall. Oh yeah, and deer are freaking everywhere. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, it's just so wonderful. It's my second time I've been there. Um, so we went from Crags, which was nice, to um, Clark's Meadow, which is where they teach you some first aid stuff with litter, with a litter, which is a, like a stretcher thingy. And you teach you how to be stretcher bearers and litters and how to do um, ropes where they slide things down. Hey, here it is. They have an excellent view of the Tooth of Time, which is a beautiful mountain. This is the uh, little cabin thing actually was on this porch, a little stretcher thing there, they teach you how to use it, how to treat injuries using it. Uh, in the window you can see the reflection of the Tooth of Time, and off this porch you can actually see the Tooth of Time, it's just amazingly beautiful. Uh, my pack wasn't fit right that day, so even though it was only a four mile hike, getting used to the elevation, the uh, altitude and elevation, and um, my pack being not fit right because I wore it two years ago, so it was set for me to be just a few inches smaller, so it was actually strangling me most of that day while I was getting used to the reduced oxygen, so I actually did throw up that day. Only a little bit, and only on the trail. We were also kind of running up a mountain. I was I was a little bit pissed. Um, Continuing on, where did we go from Craig? So we went to a place called... Bien... Obien. Yeah, here. Beautiful campsite. 
It's got these lush meadows. They do camping stuff. Oh, there's a creek with branding. Uh, there, I guess there's a pond there. I didn't see a pond. Which is weird because it rained every freaking day. Oh, yeah, and on the way from Clark's Meadow to the Crags Camp, um, it rained. Then we set up our tents and got inside our tents and it rained. Uh, do, 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 do. Looking for good pictures. They have horse riding boy band, but we didn't do that. Oh, yeah, dude, this is the best one. This is the truck wagon dinner. It's the dinner where they cook rehydrated, I think it's rehydrated, um, beef stew stuff. Uh, what's it called? Um, I guess it's just beef stew. And it is amazing because you don't have to rehydrate it yourself, and it's so great after a few days of hiking. This is also the day four of us carried eleven or five days worth of food up the side of a mountain, a very steep mountain. Um, it was painful because I carried eleven bags of food, and it's all dehydrated and very lightweight. But each bag is maybe one or two pounds, so it's an extra twenty pounds of weight in total. So it was heavy stuff. Um, let's see. What else is there? So we spent the day there, uh, drying our boots out, because the day before, we'd uh, been walking over from, uh, what was it called? A place called Fish Camp, which is just kind of a log cabin lodge. We crossed a river six times, and I mean crossed, as in we went through it, not as in we went over a bridge over it. <laughs> we just kind of plowed through the river multiple times, and eventually we were like, screw it, we'll take the road! Which you're not technically supposed to do, but it was the only way to the commissary anyway, which is where we got our next days of food. There's no way in hell I'm carrying 12 days of food around the wilderness. Um, so we hiked 20 pounds of food up the side of a mountain. One of the adults, who we now call the Hulk, hiked about 30 pounds of food up the mountain, in addition to his 30-pound pack. So it was about 70 pounds for him. Um, all things considered, considering the water we'd added and such. So yeah, he was he just kind of ran ahead of us, and it was a little bit crazy. Um... From Boy Bien, we then had our hell day, which is fun. Bonito Peak. So from there we went to Bonito Peak. We hiked out of the meadow, and as soon as we got in the meadow, we got lost. This was literally two minutes after leaving camp. We weren't exactly horribly lost. We knew which direction to go, but we weren't sure where exactly we were. We eventually picked up the trail, and we were able to go back up Bonito Peak. As we near the top of the peak, the thunderstorms rolled in again. Oh, but at this point in time, we dried my boots out, and my boots had cracked in half their soles. So I was walking with broken boots at this point in time. Um, so it started to thunder a little bit, but off in the distance, we decided to break for lunch because we hadn't eaten all morning. And we were hungry, starving, and tired. So we all sit down to eat lunch, and we're enjoying a nice lunch of cup crackers and dried or the, you know, little tuna packet thingies that have a little bit of water in them, and you're like, ooh, yay, okay. It's delicious when you're up there and you don't have anything better. So we're eating those, and all of a sudden you see a flash. Oh, one, two, boom! The world seems to explode! As the boom happens, another flash happens. Well, simultaneously, we get the thunder report from there. So picture, like, an explosion happening right outside your window. That's pretty much what it felt like, except we didn't have windows. Um... If you've, ever been, if you've ever been near a tree that's been struck by lightning while outside on top of a mountain, that's actually kind of exactly how it felt. Um, so we, well, to be honest, I jumped up and yelled for everyone to get the lightning positions, and uh, I gotta give it to those boys. They knew exactly what to do. As soon as I shouted that, they all scattered, 30 meters of separation, got down on their, um, on the sole, they squat down on top of the soles of their shoes so that only the rubber touches the ground, get as low as possible, you cover your ears, Shut your eyes, and you just stand there for five, well, 30 minutes. We hung out there for five minutes, and then it started to hail. <laughs> First, it was a little bit of hail. And then if you've ever been inside a torrential rainstorm, it was kind of like that, but instead of rain, it was just balls of ice that hit us repeatedly for about 10 minutes. And we said, screw it, we hung out underneath trees. We only ever got, like, two lightning strikes near us. This was right below Bonita Peak. We then went up and over Bonita Peak, came down the other side, where it, did the thunder thingy, tried to kill us again, so we all spread out, and then it hailed again for ten more minutes with pea-sized hail, which hurt a bit. Then we hiked down off the mountain for another few miles. This is with, like, 50-pound packs at the bare minimum. Um, it's a steep-ass mountain. So we're tired, we're a little bit dehydrated. Um, 
So we're trying to drink water. It's cold because there's ice everywhere. It starts to heat up. And the entire day was a giant cycle. Of, there'd either be ice on the ground, making it like 40 degrees, or the sun would be up and it'd be about 80, 90 degrees. So you were all constantly taking off jackets and putting jackets on. So everything was really slow and it was rocky. So it was hell on your feet and it was hell on your body and you just kept getting thirsty or something. This was by far our worst day, I should add. So then we proceed down this um, little creek stream that proceeds down the mountain at about a 45 degree angle for about half a mile. Which, if you've ever done a calf stretch, picture doing that, except you land into it. You kind of jump on it with a 50 pound weight in your hand. And then you do that for half a mile. It's, um, it's tiring. Oh, and if you slip, you like break your leg. So there's only a little bit of pressure, too. So at the end of that, we got to a place called Red Hills Camp, which is by far my least favorite camp, because A, it's at the bottom of a ravine, and B, once you're, when you're at the bottom of a ravine, the sun sets early and rises late, which is really bad if there's ice freaking everywhere. It's, I think, one of the newer camps. Um, see if I can get it. It's, a, it's also a trail camp. Also, the commissary had forgotten to give us our dinner for this day, so we didn't actually have any... um dinner this night. We just kind of had whatever we remembered to bring. So yeah, that was that was an interesting day. And oh, so as we got to camp, it hailed on us a third time. So we all hung out under trees with our 50 pound packs on, thinking, shit, it's hailing. <laughs> then it stopped hailing. And that was nice. And we all set up our tents on the now soggy, flooded campsite. Which was quickly draining, I must add. It was really nice that it drained quickly, but it was still cold as balls. Set up our dining fly, which is basically just a giant ass tarp, which you stick your pack under. And as I was moving my sleeping bag out of my pack under the dining fly and moving my backpack, it starts hailing. And this time it's not pea sized, but it's marble sized hail. Keep in mind, there's no real house to go into. Your house is your tent. Um, but I mean, I'm not going outside in marble sized hail, so I hung out with five other people underneath the dining fly. Which, if you've ever been to film, you'll know that Dining Fly is not really meant to hold more than five people, so... Plus packs. So we had our camp chairs out underneath it, and one of the adults put my sleeping pad over his back because he kept getting hit by marble-sized hail because he was pushed up against the wall. It was... That day was kind of miserable. The only good thing about the day was we all had hot chocolate because one of the adults had a jet boil, which was nice. Uh, I don't know. I'm not really complaining because now it makes an awesome story about the time I almost died by lightning and got hit by hail four times. But I mean, at the end of the day, it wasn't too horrible because my tent was dry, my sleeping bag was dry, and my long underwear was dry, and that was all I needed to go to sleep and be happy. My hat was dry too. Um, little wool cap I wear. That was really, really um lucky. So next we went from this camp over um place called Comanche Pass, which is just a pass in the trail. I'll, I'll show you guys an itinerary or a map, and I'll point out the whole trail. Uh, Comanche Pass, it's just a crossroad, really, but it's easy to find crossroad. And we went to a place called Black Mountain, where they had um, black powder rifle shooting. And this is one of my favorite places. Um, they do kind of interpretive stuff. What's it called? Um, they call it backcountry interpretive stuff. Um... I got to shoot a Black Powder 1861 Springfield rifle, which is the same rifle used by the Union in the Civil War, and reload it and such. It's a 58 caliber muzzle-loading Springfield 1861 rifle, and it does not kick at all. It was super easy to fire. Um, there's a picture of it, I think. It's it's really nice. Uh, where is it? Where is it? No, that works. It's not really a picture of me, but it's a picture of a guy firing a rifle. It was super fun. And uh, they let me stay after because I asked if I could, if I, how they clean the gun. They just said I could help clean it. And it's one of the main reasons I kind of want to staff Philmont next year. Um, I don't really know how that will play into the video scheduling thing, but I'm um, parents on a cabin up there, around there. Because my dad went to Philmont when he was young, and he always went to cabin around there. So uh, if I can find a place with the internet, I'll probably upload from there somehow. I might start doing longer videos with more time spacing thingies. Um, but that's in a year, and I'm going to have to figure out how to make it work in college first. So, um, yeah, there's that. Anyway, so...
Yeah, so this entire time there are just deer wandering around everywhere. And uh, as we're setting up our tents, before we can get the rain fly on, but before the tent is... But after the tent is unraveled, it's in its most vulnerable state, because it can get wet very easily, and it just pours rain for five minutes. And I mean, talking, it had lightly drizzled for 30 minutes, so we were like, okay, we can get the tent set up real fast, we can get through this really easily. Pours rain for the five minutes we're setting up our tent. And it doesn't get soaked, but it gets a little bit damp, which is just enough to freeze your balls off at night. But my sleeping bag was dry, my sleeping pad was fine. My clothes were dry, because they were all inside Ziploc bags, inside a trash bag, inside my pack, inside a pack cover, underneath the dining fly. Water is not your friend at Philmont, unless it's inside an Nalgene water bottle, for those of you who don't Nalgene stuff. Um, if you can't drink it, it's your enemy. And if you can drink it, it probably still is your enemy. Um, no, no, Mini Bear. Most people are snooze new. Uh, also, another inside joke. Go to film on. Um, what is it? Um, Black Mountain. Black Mountain. One, what just wonderful place. I, I just loved Black Mountain. It was my favorite place. I don't know why people... They used to say it used to be a destination camp, but now it isn't. I don't, I don't know why it isn't. It's, it's just amazing. They had a history major there who just knew everything about the Civil War. Now, there was a battle of the Civil War I never knew about. It's called the Battle of Glorietta Pass. They called it the Gettysburg of the West. No one told me about it, ever. There was apparently like a giant, massive rush for the Confederates to get to California early in the war so they can get an open port, and the Union just barely stopped them. And it's really interesting stuff. I, I'd say go look it up if you're a Civil War fan of any, or I guess a Civil War history buff, because I'd never heard of it. Um, so let's go uh, next. From Black Mountain, we went to a place called Cypher's Mine. Which is really, really nice. We slept in one of these. Which is way better than you think it is. You think, oh no, it's an open half shed. I've slept in a tent for the past eight days. I'm happy I don't have to set it up today. I think. And then we went to the contention mine. It was actually really cool because we traveled on a fault. Um, I think called the Stomp. Well, they played lots of guitars and stuff. It was, it was, it was really cool. Um, oh yeah, and that's an algae. I guess like an algae right there. If you don't know what an algae is. This is this is fun. Oh, all oh, someone is just fun. <laughs> is and then there's all the shirts. All the shirts you see is just beautiful. Um, yeah, <laughs> you're in copious. <laughs> you really get into you, you. Everyone there is really into what's going on. It's just. It's just, it's just amazing, really. Um, so from Cypher's Mind, we went to Cimbroncito, which is a big destination. Oh, I guess that's Cimbroncito, which is a giant destination camp where we had another layer of day. We spent two days there. We had a conservation project where I was this, one, of the, one of the guys in the sledge crew, which is the sledgehammer, and we beat the crap out of a rock for about three hours straight. Um... In little 20 whack intervals with an 8 pound sledgehammer. We took away most of a rock and then we got to hit another rock which we beat into a million pieces with the sledgehammer. Because we're cool. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys about Mr. Bigglesworth at Black Mountain. That's what I was going to tell you about. This is Mr. Bigglesworth as a small child. It's a mountain lion. We did not meet Mr. Bigglesworth as a small child. We met the big Bigglesworth. One of our guys was taking a dump on the latrine. Not a red roof in. Red roof ends are luxurious. The latrines are not the least luxurious, but not the, they're average. They're average. You're, yeah. Anyway, I'll, I'll explain red roof and slash latrine later. Um, all of a sudden, he sees this pair of eyes. He shines his light in it, and holy shit, that's Mr. Bigglesworth, the mountain lion. So he literally scares the shit out of him, and he runs back to campsite. Like, holy shit, there's a mountain lion. And we still have to put up our bear bags, which is where you hang literally anything that a bear can smell inside a tree. Bubble up a tree on a line between two trees. It's um not really hard work, but it's annoying every now and then. If someone forgets something and they leave it down because they need to bring down this 40 pound bag of food, put all your food back in it, then send it back up. Most people don't forget after the first thing. Um, so let's go. Uh, 
So he sees his mountain lion. We all get in a giant group and are screaming. Someone started singing Soft Kitty, Warm Kitty, and it is the most amazing song to sing when you're being hunted by a mountain lion. So we made it through the night, and no one got killed by a mountain lion, to that we know of. Um, doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo. Someone went to Cimarron Cedo later on. Uh, Cimarron Cedo is rock climbing, warm showers, nice lounge thingies. Well, not little. They have a, I say lounge, I mean they have a nice porch. This porch is really nice. Um, rock climbing. I guess this is the mountain thingy. They um, climb a mountain. I'm terrified of heights, so I don't do that. Uh, oh, here, here's a good explanation. This is Luxury. This is a Pilot Bombardier Red Roof Inn. It actually looks like it's a disaster turnaround. I think I know which one this is. Um, see, this is a toilet. You don't pee in it, you poop in it. Because the pee will attract bears, and that's how you get poo bears. Not there are matches in it, because that's how you get flaming poo bears. Which is something the staff tells you at the very beginning, and it sounds super cool, because, you know, the staff and stuff. Anyway, this is luxury. It has a roof and walls and privacy, and it smells a little bit bad, but you don't care, because you've been out in backcountry for 12 weeks, with, for 12 days, not 12 weeks, dear God, please don't send me, um, 12 days with no shower, and so you smell worse than it does. Red roof cringes at your approach, not the other way around. Anyway, so you sit in the pilot, and your buddy will sit in the bombardier, or vice versa, and uh, you can have a nice casual conversation, share toilet paper, or, you know, just kind of pray to God that you can poop before, you know, you get too awkward. This is average. This is a non-luxurious latrine. One made out of wood. The luxurious ones are made out of plastic. This one is also has a nice um, privacy backstop attachment. Some of them don't have that. Some of them are just two holes in a giant plastic tub with nothing between you and your bombardier. My least favorite is to pilot to co-pilot, where you sit next to the person. It's like sitting on a bus, but you both have your pants down to try and take a dump. Um, either way, that's a red roof end, though, that is pilot to bombardier, or pilot to co-pilot. And it's still slightly more luxurious than sitting out in the wild pooping with a bunch of deer. Um, I don't see a plastic latrine anywhere, so... Just just imagine this, but more plasticky. That's, that's really nice. Unless it's hailed, in which case then it's covered in ice and you can't poop. Unless you're, like, really desperate to, in which case then you can poop pretty much anywhere. The least luxurious is what's called a cat hole, and it's literally what you think it is. You dig a hole and poop in it. That has been my 5 to 10 minute poop talk. We will now never talk about it ever again. Um, from Cimarron Cedo, we went to a place called Upper Clark's Fork. The Clark's Fork. And there's a staff camp at the bottom called Clark's Fork where they do stuff. We had lunch down here. We hung out here for most of the afternoon. I played a guy in chess. I beat one guy. I lost to another guy. And one guy we had a draw because I had to go up to camp. Um, the night we were there was the fifth time it hailed. We were up at a dry camp above it. And um, we set up our tents in this meadow. One of the adults, deep voice, just looks around and goes, this is idyllic. About 30 minutes later, it was pouring rain and hail, the worst I've ever personally seen in my life. And I'm so glad we bought a new tent before going, because it floated, man. We were There was three inches of water on the ground, and I was sitting in my tent, and just ooh, kind of bobbing around a little bit, and I was thinking, I'm floating in a stream <laughs> on my tent, and everything was dry, and that was my last night out there. It was... Oh my god, so, so, just, I was so lucky. I was so happy to be dry at the end of that. It was amazing. And the famous words of one of our members the next morning, as we woke up at 5.30 in the morning, the second we got packed, he just looks around and says, Boys, let's get out of this miserable bitch. <laughs> oh my god, it was miserable. It was tons of fun, but it was miserable. <laughs> um... Because it rained every day. There was no inside. It was cold. But I loved it. Yeah, see, here's here's a not as luxurious one. It's wooden. Just two holes. Yeah. Oh, wait, 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 wait a second. I saw... Um, no, no. There you... Oh, uh, yeah, see, co pilot to co-pilot. 
There's a pilot side right here, or pilot right there, co-pilot right there. If you're lucky, there's a little board to separate that. Mm -hmm. So after that, we hiked back to base camp over the Tooth of Time, which I forgot to show. Uh, tooth of Time. Tooth of Time. Tooth of Time. Which is this thing. This was the day we had our 14 mile hike. Um, this is the top of the tooth. Only a few people go up there. Just because you have to boulder your entire way up there and some people don't feel like it. Mostly the adults who are 50 or 60 who figure they go fucking hike 14 miles with 30 pound packs. Go, Jesus Christ, they're insane. Um, so that's the tooth of time, right? Um, yeah, so we hike down from here, down this ridge, uh, down the Trail of Tears. Wait, wait, let me show. I'm pretty sure they all have a map of tears. Come on, show me the Trail of Tears. It's, it's, it's basically the trail from the Tooth of Time back to base camp. It's about eight miles of switchbacks down the side of a mountain that shows you base camp. So you can see all these flushing toilets, um, all these running water, food that you don't have to cook, and tents that you don't have to set up for about four hours while you walk towards it slowly, slowly, getting more dehydrated, more tired. When you get to the end, you're just so happy. That day, that last day, we walked for seven hours at a pace of two miles an hour, which is pretty damn fast, 35 pounds on your back going up a mountain. Um, so seven hours, so 14 miles in seven hours. I still can't believe they did that. They must have been damn happy to get off that mountain. Um, we get there, we go to base camp. Just a beautiful day. Hmm. God, I mean, you get to base camp, you're happy for a little while, and then all of a sudden you start thinking, you know, you, you, the thought sneaks into your mind, not but like a few weeks later, you know. I kind of miss being out in the back country, hanging around, you know, playing outside, and peeing wherever you want to, um, cooking your own food, messing around in the wild. It's just fun. It's nothing but fun. It's the kind of reason why I want to staff there. It just looks amazing. Um... So yeah, that's what we've been doing for the past two weeks. Uh, let's see if I can find. There'll be, I'm sure, there'll be a picture. <laughs> and there's a closing campfire, and it's just, it's just tons of fun. It's the happiest I've ever been to eat a stale cinnamon roll. <laughs> So I'd say if, if you're a Boy Scout, and you're even thinking about going to Philmont, and, you, and even if you're not thinking about it, I'd say start considering it. It's the best high adventure. Sea base is luxurious. Northern Tier is miserable. Philmont, no matter what you do, you're going to have a wonderful time with amazing stories to tell. The time you went up a mountain, got held on four times, and nearly killed by lightning. <laughs> it's just a good introduction to any conversation. And plus, you get to sound like a total badass whenever you talk about anything. Um... So yeah, that's um, that that's it really. That's what I've been doing for the past two weeks. Um, so yeah, expect videos to resume soon. Uh, I'm currently busy sleeping, enjoying my Tuesday, which is bur no Thursday, which is I'm christening Burrito Day, at which I'm going to try to consume every single meal I have in the form of a burrito. I already had a breakfast burrito. I got Chipotle and get me a lunch burrito. I don't really know where to get a dinner burrito, and if I get this up before dinner, I will be looking for comments about burrito places. Although this is after a th although this is after a Thursday, the 25th. Um, please don't send me too many burritos. Actually, you don't want to send me burrito suggestions anyway. I want more burritos. I've been working for these burritos for two damn weeks. I'm going to get my burritos. Anyway, this has been Tomato. Um, probably going to go get a burrito soon, actually. I will see you all soon. Um, in the meantime, have fun and happy scouting.